Texas Dinosaur Track Update. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to visit the Paluxy River in Glen Rose, Texas here September 3rd and 4th coming up, but we're going to report on what's going on and what we've been told. And just as a way of introduction, this is the Lost World Museum and welcome to it. My name is John Adolfi and we are going to give you an update at the Paluxy. You've probably seen it in the news and let me show you that incredible picture of the dinosaur tracks that are at the National uh, Park in Glen Rose, Texas. Dinosaur National Park, Glen Rose, Texas. And we're going to be heading there 8.30 Saturday morning on the 3rd of September to see what these look like and to film them and to video them from our own perspective. Unfortunately, we won't be able to go live because the signal just won't reach, <laughs> sadly enough. Or <laughs> it's where we would go live, excuse me. These tracks right here caused a stir, and for the last week they've been talking about them. But what they haven't been talking about, which they have, is the rain that uh, they got down in Texas. Anywhere between a few inches to 15 inches, and they still have a few more rain days. Not much that's coming, and they've covered up a lot of the tracks. Now, what you don't know about this trackway, perhaps, uh, you haven't been told, is that this trackway is the longest in North America. We're gonna get all the details when we get down there as to how long it is, what the size of the tracks are, and more. Um, I'm really excited about that, and I hope you are too coming up. Now, let's talk about the Paluxy. This right here is where we have been on the Paluxy. This is further, I believe, uh, further south of where the Dinosaur uh, National Park is. And as you can see from this photo, you'll see various tracks that are latent right there. And there's many, many tracks on the Paluxy. Now, the Paluxy's down here. Do you see where it's down a ways? Well, the Paluxy has been higher at some point. And these tracks are in layers, meaning that there is uh, and I love limestone, by the way, it's one of my favorite stones and it's not like I got a favorite stone, but this is, be it's just beautiful. It's whitish and it just looks fantastic, especially when you got a dinosaur print in it. And so they have layers there at the Paluxy and when they pull a layer off, sometimes they'll find additional dinosaur tracks. So whatever was happening there at the Paluxy, dinosaurs were at the, you know, at the base of it, as you can see where the water is right now, there's tracks there. There's tracks on the next level up, next level up, and the layers are maybe about, you know, three, four, five, maybe eight inches. And every time they peel back a layer, they'll find a lot of times dinosaur tracks. It just seems to be a hotbed. There's lots of fossils there in um, Texas, all over the place. And there's my foot right there standing in comparison. And I've got about, that's about a 12 inch foot. And right there, you can see uh, how big it is. Typically, they're three-toed dinosaurs down there. You've got your Hadrosaur and your Acrocanthosaurus. And this is what that bad boy looks like. All right, that's an Acrocanthosaurus, three-toed dinosaur. And that's your typical dinosaur print that is at, in Glen Rose. Once in a while, you find a sauropod. And if you're not familiar with the word sauropod, it's like a brontosaurus or brachiosaurus. It's round and it's big. I've seen them, I don't know how, 20 some odd inches you know, wide. I've, I've heard of ones that are 36 inches. So let me show you a couple of more. There you go. And what happens is they very quickly fill up with dirt and mud and whatnot. And then you got to clean them out periodically. And they do deteriorate over time. Doesn't take real long to do that, but, and so, um, and here's here's a hadrosaur. So you find those footprints in Acrocanthosaurus. And just as a way of exploring a little bit more about the uh, hadrosaur, let me show you, we went to the uh, Southwestern Adventist University. They had a hadrosaur tail. That is a tail to a hadrosaur. Look how many how many bones there are in that. It's just incredible the way they have them all lined up. And so that's a little bit more about that. Now the Brachiosaurus, um, let me show you what that bad boy looks like. There we go. 
Oh, okay, one more thing I wanted to show you. And there's another footprint of uh, Acrocanthosaurus. And you can see from the tape measure and everything that they're around, typically around 14 inches, more, more or less, okay? And again, it's in limestone. And, um, you know, some people ask, well, when, how old are the prints, you know? This is where there's a departure in science worldview, however you want to call it. Science says that's a footprint of a dinosaur, three-toed dinosaur. Science says that. No matter what brand or belief within science, and I'll get to that in just a second, it's a dinosaur print. That's evidence. Where they depart is how old they are, and how quickly it was uh, that that footprint was put there and hardened up, or how it got there. There's a two different things, and I'll, I'll get into that in just a second. I want to show you the Brachiosaurus. That was a big boy. It's about 70 feet from 70 feet, 70 feet from from uh, stem to stern. I believe six. That was about 40 feet up in the air, and so we find those as well too. All right. Dinosaur skin at the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, and we have a small piece of ha uh, hadrosaur skin, but I'm going to show you this really nice one here. Look at the design that's in this skin. You'll notice that there's uh, uh, there's uh, like shape and, and florets, and let me give you a closer view of what this looks like. There you go. It, do you see how it looks like a flower? like the center of a flower and then little petals around it. I mean, these bad boys were designed beautifully. And, you know, so, and then outside the Southwestern uh, Adventist University, there was this uh, life-size Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, cast. And listen, most everything you see in museums are casts, meaning that at one time those bones were in the field, more or less, and then what they did was they took casts of them create a mold and pour material in there that is appropriate for display, paint it, and then put it up. That's a cast right there. They may not have had all the bones for it, so they had to make up some of those bones by replicating and approximating. Nothing wrong with that. You know, obviously, unless you're making judgment calls on things that you have no idea about. And so, there you have it. All right. Now, this is where it gets weird. Look, there's two basic philosophies, if you want to call it that. And some would, I know I'm going to get some comments saying that's not a philosophy, it's science, it's objective, it's, it's. So the premise or worldview that's behind the two sciences that seem to conflict with one another is creation science and evo let's just call it evolution science, okay? The idea that the earth is 4.51 billion years old and that Life started approximately a billion years ago, actually 3.5 billion years ago in the form of a proto-RNA that then turned into some kind of one-celled animal that split apart and one went the direction of plants and one went the direction of animals, okay, one billion years ago. And through natural selection and through positive mutation and environmental pressure, through survival of the fittest, uh, they became what they are today that that one-celled animal that split apart, one became trees and Venus flytraps and roses, and the other one became uh, fish and mammals and, and us. That's the idea behind it. And that us came approximately three to four million years ago, or old ago, okay? And have evolved from a common ancestor where the apes and monkeys and whatnot come from that common ancestor, and we come from that same common ancestor millions of years previous to that, and here we are today as, as humans. That's the idea, at least, and the time frame involved. Dinosaurs, on the other hand, they theorize that they died out 66 million years ago when a huge asteroid hit the Yucatan Peninsula and wiped out almost all life on Earth 66 billion years ago. So the dinosaurs reigned approximately uh, for, the, for like a close to 100 or more million years, and they came to an end during that time. According to creationism, humans came about and all life on Earth, now that's not the rock on Earth, but the life on Earth came about 6,000 years ago. 
Now, a lot of people think that's Looney Tunes. The interesting thing about it is, though, is that humankind has believed this for the last 6,000 years, minus the last 200 years. And obviously, there's going to be some pagan, uh, pagan, um, different pagan cultures that perhaps had a different take on it. But a lot of them have creation accounts. And a lot of them have the flood account, which is very telling and interesting. So dinosaurs, according to creationism, came about 6,000 years ago. And during the worldwide flood, 4,500 years ago, or after approximately 1,600 years of development, culture, uh, propagation, all of that what took place in that first 1,600 years were wiped out. And during that 371-day period, during the worldwide flood, all of that was buried and solidified quickly under extraordinary, multiple different types of geological processes that were happening all at the same time. That produced a condition or a place to where fossilization could take place easily. Where to replicate that today, they did an experiment where they put fish in, a, in some sort of enclosed basket uh, cage, and they put it down in the mud, five feet in the mud. And they brought it up over the course of time, and after six weeks, there was nothing left. There is no fossilization going on. The microbes got them. The Whatever was in the mud got them. They deteriorated and went away. So it's got to be rapid. Now, that right there may not be the clearest picture and even in, in, uh, when you see it in, in uh, you know, the actual itself, this fossil, or shall I say uh, imprint, which is not a cast, this is the actual rock itself, is located in Glen Rose, Texas, of all places, at the Creation Evidence Museum. What you'll see is a dinosaur track. And then over to the left, my left, you'll see what appears to be a human footprint. Now, this is not the first time this has been found, but you could argue that that isn't, that isn't a footprint inside of a dinosaur print. Should it be that, then they were put down at the same time. They weren't put down at different times because it's in the same layer. Let me show you another one. This is the Delk print. And the Delk print is, in say the least, startling to the point to where it looks like it's a fake. This is also in Cretaceous limestone, which is fine for the three-toed dinosaur, which they believe is an Acrocathosaurus. Now, dinosaur and human footprints vary as far as the shape that they create. Sometimes they look spot on like a footprint. Other times it's obscured. And we're gonna be having another video coming up soon that's going to address that we're going to show the experimentation they did down in Texas with human footprints in mud showing the different types of conditions or how they look depending on the mud's um, viscosity of water and whatnot. Meaning that is it muddy or is it dry when the footprint goes down or the foot goes down to impress into the mud. Okay, so the Delk print. As you can see, what it looks like here is that a dinosaur print and a human footprint are in the same strata. How old is this rock? According to evolutionists, that rock is going to be, and typically limestone is somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 120 or 140 million years. They approximate down in the Glen Rose area, I've heard somewhere around 108 million years. The Delk print here, this was found in 2001. Um, on the side bank at the Paluxy. And what's interesting about this print is, is that if you notice the, the middle toe of the dinosaur, it's pushing in on the human footprint. So if this is carved, then there'll be some telltale signs that it's carved, especially when they do a spiral scat, CAT scan, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. So just take a really good look at that. I'm going to show you a couple of more shots of it. And here is another one. Now, this is the actual stone itself under different lighting conditions, and that's the reason why it appears uh, a little different in color. So take a look at that. We went in there. That's my measuring tape right there, approximately 34 inches, 35 inches long, okay? And you've got about a 10-inch-ish or so foot 
and about a 14 inch acro, what they believe to be an acrocanthosaurus footprint. Now the next one that we're going to show is a, again a little different lighting conditions. Take another good look at the way that middle toe is encroaching or pushing in on the human, what looks like to be a human footprint in stone, uh, excuse me, in mud at the time. And there you have it. Now, spiral CAT scan, all right? It's just a, a way of taking an X-ray that shows a lot more than just a regular X-ray, okay? Now, they do it in slices or in layers, just like in, um, just like when a human is being done, you know, let's say, let's say they want to do a CAT scan of, of, of a brain or whatever. They do it in layers, and so they go down through. They did the same thing with the Delk print. So look on the right-hand side. You see the, the gray right there? And you can review this later on and actually read this. But the lighter shades in the scan, okay, are not compressed. The darker ones are. So as you can see from the one on the extreme right, okay, there is something going on there in that area where the two footprints lie, where there's some compression going on. There is a, uh, the, the mud is squished. Carved, carved limestone does not do this. You cannot take a CAT scan and find compression or those dark areas when something is carved. That's one of the ways to tell whether or not it's carved. Sure, you can look for the telltale marks of perhaps if the carver is not so good you can maybe tell that it was carved but if you can't then cat scan spiral cat scan now there's one two three four five six seven eight nine layers as you can see and again the dark and you can look this over and and pause it if you want to right now and read the writing on the right side. It's startling. It's really fantastic because what it does is it brings a little bit of credibility to this particular print. We're going to have more. And when we get back from our September trip, we will have footage and we'll be releasing things. So I encourage you to either A, subscribe to the Lost World Museum YouTube channel, or if you go to museumalerts.com and sign up for our newsletter, two things are going to happen. Number one, you're going to get this free report called Three Top Reasons Why Noah's Ark Must Still Exist. You'll get that free just for signing up. It'll be automatically uh, given you as a download, just a way of saying thank you. The second thing is as soon as we start releasing any kind of videos on YouTube, you're going to get an alert through, the, through the e your email automatically. Whether you're signed up for YouTube or not, you're, you know, or registered there or subscribed, you're going to get an alert. Um, so that's one way to interface with us. The other way, if you want to get a little more cozier, is that you text us and say, hey, John, I'm in, or hey, John, hi. And I'll say, hey, Bob, hey, Carol. And uh, this is only good for the United States and Canada. Sorry. Um, the newsletter, the one that I just showed you there, let me just bring that up one more time. That's free anywhere in the world. Matter of fact, we had somebody just sign up today from Nibia, and I want to welcome them. Um, that text number right there will get you a direct uh, connection with myself. And when we do something, go live, uh, send out some other piece of uh, content or whatnot, we text you a link. And so this is one-stop shop if you want to see it all, okay? And... Uh, so there you have it. I want to thank you for joining us uh, for this episode on dinosaur tracks in Texas. Stay tuned for more. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I know you hear that all the time. But that way you'll... And, and by the way, if you don't click the little bell on the highest setting, then you won't get alerted. If you want to get alerted, great. And you guys have a wonderful day and thanks for joining us.